gonna farm, I think. It's hard to say. We'll see what happens in game as we get the narration ready to the MLP Dota and John X Fire on the mic. Welcome back. We are going into game number two between Team One and Team SMG. And it is a Dota and John X Fire. John. Let's talk about the draft. Which one do you prefer? Because I haven't had the chance to ask you the hard it. question in a while. Which, which draft's better? It's a, it's a tough Hello, one to decide. Best. I think my, both teams Hello, came out best. with really strong Hello, drafts. I love the last Mama. Mama. The from SMG. Mama. This is a Raging Potato special. We saw him do this a lot with Execration in BTS Pro Series 7, if I recall right. And he had a spectacular time playing for Execration then. So this is something they can ride on. We we know Mid1, uh, we know, yeah, Mid1 said, uh, in my interview when I talked to him, he said, it, Got a Pinoy offlaner, so a lot riding there for Raging. When you give him a special hero, could enable. I think they've got a better death ball in SMG. T1, they're the ones that might want to take it a bit slow. Scale up with the Dusa, scale up with the Lina. So they have to kind of be ready to maybe play the stall game a bit, right? To get some early items up, particularly on Coral. And once you're ready to play around the Lina, it can get a little bit easier. But SMG, if they take these early objectives, Mike, it's going to be a bit of a toughie. Certainly will be, and they've definitely got the draft to, to get that done. T1. <laughs> oh, oh, I love it. I, I really do. <laughs> These stickers, just fantastic in SMG. Well, they've got nothing to respond with right now, but I'm sure they'll have their support pack sorted very soon. Just all across the map. Um. <laughs> the fight for the Banneroons does begin. And away we go. SMG trying to sneak up into that dire triangle and, and take a third for themselves, but it will be a 52 trade. That's even start between these two teams. As we will start with the mid lane, of course, where you will see Moon on that DP against Carl once again on the Lena. Generally speaking, John, I, I would usually say the DP will win out most lanes, but against the mid Lena, I'd say it's a, it, it's a much harder expectation here from the Death Prophet. Yeah, I think you can draw even as Moon, as you can kind of sustain through the harassment of Carl. You can push out the wave as well with your crit swarm, but Carl does have better damage. He's got better use, especially once the fiery soul is up. And so he's going to be able to trade a little bit faster. He does not have his own self regen. So it's all a bit on edge. Uh, I think Moon's going to have a pretty good time, but Carl's not going to be dissuaded either. I think Moon control is going to be slightly more important for Carl in that case, as the bottle refill is also his uh, sustain uh, compared to Moon, whereas you can just kind of spam the spirits, hyphen, run up, and you're going to be all right. So should be relatively even on mid. Big spike would be around level three, depending on what Carl goes for. It should be the one one one, but somebody off to prioritize Dragon Save a Fiery Soul if he does feel like just farming is gonna be a lot more of a priority for him. Look at that top lane as well. You'll right. see Savage and Whitemon against Raging and, and our fur. The last time around, Savage and Whitemon had a very good time during that laning stage. Because this time around with the Medusa, you might want to play a bit more conservatively. But he does have White Mon on that Bane, and I think the, the Bane will be able to apply enough pressure uh, to keep them off Savage here. We'll have to wait and see, though. I mean, the Swarm Charge is a lot of damage if they do get it onto Medusa. The White Mon, again on that Bane, should be able to keep them at bay. Yeah, it's uh, going to take a few levels for SMG to really hit that spike here. I love that preemptive sentry coming through from White Mon. So the charges with Afu aren't always going to be lined up. And important thing for T1 is just play it slow. You don't have to be aggressive. You just sit back, farm on Savage. It's not going to be as tough of a lane for Dedusa compared to what we saw last time as well. So this should be much more manageable for Savage to just build up and hit his item spikes. Should have a look at that final lane as well, where you'll see Kuku and Zephyr against Roger, and of course, mid one. The panel predicted very easily that mid one was going to be jumping back on this to this carry Luna, and we have seen it many times. He does make the jump in onto Zephyr. It's just going to be a bit of damage, though. Nothing right home about. For eventually, we'll be able to just kind of passively heal up with that headdress. But mid one's back on his comfort pick in the Luna, John, and I think that does kind of make me feel a lot more confident with SMG's run. Oh yeah, we saw how mid one reacted when the Luna came out. He, he, he had some very specific oh, gestures there. He's feeling happy. What? You do have to watch how much Roger does trade. You can't really burst through the sustain of Night Stalker with an Ayo Tether up. Luku's just going to be able to right-click fine. He doesn't really care for the silence from the Chris as well. So, 
Still an early time for T1. This lane really kicks into gear. Maybe by first night time, you should have level 200 in the night. At that point, when you can trade a lot more, maybe look for a kill opportunity, opportunity no on Roger. Roger's doing right now. now. He's chasing Zephyr away. I would have him tether up the yeah. Night Stalker. The mid one's really not under any pressure at all. And again, just safe farming time on this bot lane. So kind of even on both safe lanes, Mike. Both pause ones just really just want to build up and hit their eyes uh -huh. and spikes. He tethered back to Cuckoo to try and help out, but that may cost him his life, and it does. Roger just so persistent on that Abaddon, and of course Midwife loves what he sees, will immediately tip back Zephyr. However, top lane, you will lose our fuel on that Weaver, so it's a bit of a support for a support trade. On those position fours, as T1 able to find it across the map. A bit of a deny on the tier two. Still a good harassment coming from, from White Mon sustaining. I'm surprised SMG just don't get the D ward on the T1 sentry. I think that's just really important if you want your reader to keep zipping in and out. Of course, the death of Afu does allow a bit of a bottle reset for Moon. They're gonna contest over the drop moons as well. They're gonna try. Carl, he'll be chased down here with Moon to Spirit Siphoning up. They do get the swarm out. They might dive tier one towers for this as Carl. He's a very valuable target. In fact, Ronda's even shown up down the on that Abaddon, and they will get him. Afu and Roger, just great rotations from the support lineup of SMG. Knowing where they've got to kind of just keep the heart of T1, is that mid lane with Carl. Is that we even go after Zephyr now on that IO? Okay. So much action across the map already. Even top lane Savage was getting charged by Raging. But now only Carl goes down. And that, this is the issue for T1. In comparison with the supports of SMG, they don't really have much presence in moving out. Sure, Weaver, oh, again. Abaddon, they don't have too much control, but they're just so active. They might, they might just dive again. I mean, you've got Wymon rotating, but Carl's already so long with HP and he's gone. That Wymon, he might just be a free kill here for, for the side of SMG if they want to go for the dive, but they will not. They'll be very satisfied with the kill onto Carl a second time. And, but John, you know what that means. Carl, he'll be making the walk of shame back into the mid lane. Yeah, and this lane is already off to a pretty slow start. Still up there in CS, but two deaths to the name. The commitment from SMG to watch mid. Again, it comes down to the support. You have more to do with a Weaver. You can provide some protection for those deep dives of the Abaddon. And for T1, their supports are highly defensive. You've got Bane, you've got Io. You can only really tether up and maybe nightmare someone. So you can't really completely stop the aggression. There's always going to be an avenue for SMG to play around at. And this is, a, this is classic SMG. They love to play around mid, they love to play around moon and just enable him to get that early momentum going. T1, they're going to focus on to Carl. You know, Sephir sticks around. He does have some chance to get out the option to get as well. And now you have level 6 on Moon, so Exo Push does come out and you're just gonna focus in on that mid. And it's just so hard when you've got Arthur on that Weaver just constantly Dying getting information tower. behind that tier 1 tower. It, it just makes it impossible to try and defend. They will pull the free wave away, but they still hold on to that siege creep. They're more than happy to just tank the T1 tower here to Moon, already getting right through the T1. The very early timing, 6 minutes in, will mean they are able to go and just rotate to different lanes now. Just set up to that bottom top T1 tower. I mean, why the hell not? Dyer's it mid is the first night time for hell. Cuckoo, but your mid tier one falling at six Dyer's and a half minutes is bad news, and they're just gonna collapse like in here. They will. Zephyr and Cuckoo are trying to back their way up, but again, the support duo of SMG is so aggressive. Hating together as a duo. This time around, we'll not be able to get a killer's top lane, raging. Dropping a little bit low there, but eventually we'll just TP out in the tree line and there'll be no cancellation for it. Thank you, know, I, I really appreciate what SMG's done here with this draft, and I mean, quite Radiant's frankly, John, you, you're going to have exits to back up in 80 seconds. That could just mean another T1 tower, considering how powerful they are at the moment. They've, they've got all the tools to really play that death ball. And comes back to draft. They've got really early Radiant's tempo with the Luna. Doesn't really need to spawn too much if you want to play aggressive. They've got the DP to kind of build their foundation on. T1, they need items. They need levels. In Cuckoo. Oh, dodge. Cuckoo's been caught out. Heals are there from Zephyr, but it's not going to be that much of a heal as Arthur. He should be able to go for a dive through the tree line, but no, they've lost him. 
Cuckoo, he'll be able to get out, but raging. He's yes, still hanging around, still trying to find a way tower. back into this fight if they can. Charge is there just in one second I if they wish it. to use it, but for now, they'll just go after that T1 bottom tower instead. That's what they really want. They want those objectives, and they want Seth from that IO, the and that's exactly what they'll get. SMG. Can't do nothing about Dyer structures Afraid right now. Afraid of nothing as Cuckoo cannot defend the T1 on this Night Stalker. In fact, Nether Strike now out from business. Raging and Cuckoo. He gets a little bit too close, <laughs> and SMG will take him out. Rotations in, T1. They're gonna keep trying. Laguna there from Carl's gonna take out one. Roger's gone, in fact, Arfu now. He does get caught by that Light Strike array. Tips out from Cuckoo as mid one. He's been left behind. Carl, can he land another nice stun? He may just, he's got that extra movement speed from Zephyr. But Raging is going to show up, and now the Eclipse is going to be committed for mid one. He's still dropping, and does go down as more tips to come out. Raging Potato now. He needs his own exit, but he's not going to have it. Sniper is there to set up. But Carl goes for a Jack and Slave instead. It may not matter though. Raging though, he does have charge back up, but he will charge back towards Cuckoo. Eventually, Carl will be able to finish off the job. That's confidence right there from Alina. Yep. It works out in the end for T1. Good defense of the bot tier one. They did lose their top in the end, so Savage is going to have to dip the elsewhere. Dire, might want to mine he's got the top tower. Not many stacks left for Savage to kind of clear out. They haven't really had time to build up too much. But T1's doing... They're reaching a the point where they can play that four protect point. They can just amp up Carl. He does have his initial item flying out as well. That should be his travels. They have a little bit more presence to control the side lanes. They can play aggressive. And as long as it's nighttime, you've got this big advantage. He just hits his level six. He does have the Dark Ascension if he wants to use it and scale it up. And that will give, again, more presence for T1. SMG, they're still relying on a bit of death ball. They've got some early items up on mid one and they're just playing around with the charges of raging. Very deep right now, getting some forward vision out. The rest of the team is here to back up. Just want to stop the Deusa from farming by taking control of those Regeneration. Right on, man, being caught here raging. He'll go right into the Nether Strike, and Arthur he'll be there with the backup damage. But Wymon, this tank is through it. Charge again. He's got help now. Wymon, he'll get Bash yeah, one with the very Dyer fire. Dyer It'll keep him alive, and he'll walk right out. Dyer structures no problem here for the Bane. So SMG, they lose nothing for that. Dyer's bottom Bit of time wasted, the but they'll still go into that bottom T1 tower. And it does seem like there's going to be no defense to come out from T1. But let Dyer this one go. SMG, we'll be able to confidently start moving into that Dire Triangle and just take over that farming location is now raging. So for a charge up, where we headed? Nowhere right now is Wymont, who will have the Nightmare to lock him down. SMG, you can just feel their blood boiling as they just want to keep chasing for more. Savage, we're starting to keep by now. The Light Striker Raid will land as the Aquatic Shield is not going to be enough to save. Arthur was not level 6, so he could not get a time lapse off. Roger just could not keep him alive. Sacrifice is going to be in on support. Good job for the back yeah, Moon's gonna pop the ulti. White Mon, he should drop. Brains that found, but he should just have no chance. Mid one will eventually take him out for his first kill of the game. Again, SMG is just doing a fantastic job of holding this triangle. And when you're playing Medusa, John, this is the place you want to play. The SMG, they are not gonna allow it. They're doing such a good job of forcing T1 into a very awkward position. Carl and Savage are sharing farm in the top. Three. It's not enough to sustain both these farming cores, and now Savage. Chase down, he's he's trying trying to well. That is low as well, Raging. He'll be there with another strike, but a hold out for now as now he does commit. Nightmare is there from Wymon. Savage still dropping Zephyr. He'll try to help keep alive as the Fiend's Grip is going to be out. He'll try to turn now. Raging, he's going to go down first. In fact, Moon, he may have gone too far on that DP. He's very low on HP himself. That's Kuku now. He'll rejoin the fight to Moon with the side of T1. With the side right in. Right 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 out. It does catch the Abaddon. Moon's gone. And Roger, he'll be the third target. <laughs> Savage just barely surviving thanks to Zephyr. And eventually they are able to turn. I love the patience there from Zephyr, Mike. He had relocate. He could have just brought Savage away from the fight. He knew they had enough follow-up. And the fight was close enough to the tier two that 
Savage could stay in, do some damage, maybe find a kill, keep building up. Radiant the aggression from SMG up. is nice and all, but they are starting to drop some that pace. They aren't farming as much. They've given some room for mid one now to build up, but not as much as we've been seeing coming out from our uh, Medusa, and I think that can be an issue. But item gap, the farm gap, isn't actually that big for mid one, despite him taking a lot of towers early. So maybe it's time to refocus a bit for SMG, wait for a couple more items to come out. T1, they're in pretty good points, you know. Six to nine, very nice number coming out for T1 uh, with a tree kill advantage. Net worth lead, not much for SMG just yet. And they're just pacing themselves. We haven't even seen relocate plays coming out from Zephyr. They will go for the Roche play now though. And this is something SMG can do. They still have control of the top jungle, not much vision from T1, so they can't contest this. Yeah, no, it's... You don't know about Roshan happening, but at the same time, they may not really be able to contest. Not without the Night Stalker ulti. Give them that nice vision. It is daytime after all, so SMG, they'll get the first Aegis of the game. Still holding on to a very slight net worth lead. You've got to question the matchups, though, in, in terms of calls. Like, Savage and, and Carl, they've really caught up in terms of net worth. At the top of the board now, are the two of T1. SMG just trailing behind at the moment. Medusa versus Luna, John. Do, do you favor one or the other? I think there are some item spikes that make that bounce around a bit. Like the, the Luna kind of gets a big spike when she finishes up, say, Silver Edge or um, or her build up into Daedalus could be either one. You can also opt for a Satanic to sustain. There's an interesting sort of counterpoint as well where you could go Ags on Luna. Just kind of play with a Spirit Breaker charge. That could be one way of doing Blessings damage as well. Having had the warrior. clips following of highly mobile target. But I think overall the Deusa towards late game is a very stable core. You've got to sustain with the IO on top of it. You're always going to top up your mana. Savage can opt to just itemize and go for a protective sort of build. He is going for what looks to be Scotty, Manta, and Lincoln's all queued up. So very defensive. Just wants to stay alive and out sustain the side of SMG. And you don't have the best burst on SMG to deal with that. Certainly don't. Not quite yet anyway. Who's still playing mind games here down the bot lane and against Cuckoo and of course Zephyr. T1, they're more than happy to just drag the game out and allow their force to keep farming up. I mean, you're essentially playing with two carries right now in the Lina and Dusa. Money to burn. T1, as long as they can hold that triangle and keep the farm up, they'll be they'll be satisfied with that. SMG kind of feeling the same way though, I think, as they got those initial objectives and they just haven't really done too much else. Invisible. Allowing mid one the space to keep his own farm up and just stay in touch with Dyer's Savage as SMG down. into the mid lane they go 23 Savage gonna be spotted as Moon is in biz right now the charge is gonna come in they wanna focus down the Medusa but Dooku he'll pop the ult in now the Zarth is out they may lose Moon straight off the bat he'll try to use up it's not gonna be enough though and the Stone Gaze it's gonna petrify everybody as they catch our food but he does get the aquatic short time lapse but it's not gonna be enough Carl finds it mid in biz and now they've got mid one in the nightmare he'll take everybody else out mid one's the last one left he'll try to mad fight through it with the Aegis up maybe they can try to reinitiate but it's not looking great for them as mid one will be left behind Rocky, he's still trying raging he'll charge in mid one he's on the run and he might just make it but savage he'll keep getting to work back on a roger they'll get a time back in fact they're not done yet relocate was there onto raging potato but they haven't looked for mid one and mid one does run into the triangle and put a huge amount this will allow t1 to get that mid t1 tower and smg they don't want to let this one go down. Mid one, he's going to come back in and maybe pay for mid one. You are getting very low, sir. He does back off at the right moment. In fact, raging. He does find the eye over Moon again, just dropping so darn low to the Laguna. Can they burst him down? Not quite yet. But Kuku, he'll go back in after raging potato, or will he? The Kushir is there. They want the DP down. Mid one, he'll reinitiate. Just lose some beams from a mile away. Just trying to stay alive and just get some damage out. But now they've got the nightmare. Mid one, he's gone too far. He might be punished for this. And it looks like he will, but Carl, he will be so as well. He does end up dropping to SMG. So you take Carl's life, but you give up mid one. 
You got a question whether that's really worth while as Blind One will keep going on to Arfu with the charges there from Raging. Back in onto the main. They want that support gone, but Raging has gone too far to boot. In fact, they've got another Arfu. He was nightmare up and Blind One. He'll walk away with a triple kill on the main. BSJ. Oh my god, that fight just never ended. Respawns were so short, it just went on forever. T1 does come on top in the end. But SMG didn't make it easy. Still, they managed to take out the Aegis, they managed to take out mid one. The mid tier one is still protected somehow. So T1 has still not found a tower, Mike. But, you know, despite that, they're still keeping farm parity up, which is just insane. Have to point out the decision of Savage in that last fight as well. The gaze from the tree line, they had no vision of Savage Radiance where he was standing on to just managed to get the ult off counteracting Radiance the Mid Eclipse coming out from mid one, so he couldn't run up while the Eclipse was running. He wasn't doing damage with that ult. Now, if you want, they're feeling confident, just running around. They've, they've got the damage, they've got the early build up. The Scotty's next for Savage. So Cuckoo's gone, raging, just doing so much damage. Cuckoo just gets bashed to death on the Night Stalker. Even during the night time, he is pretty susceptible if Raging gets his hands on him. That he does. So, uh, I mean, they are still buying plenty of space for Carl and Savage, and I think that's the main issue here for, for SMG, is they cannot slow down the cause of, of T1. Carl? Oh, he knows Arfu's around somewhere. Sakuchi just in the nick of time, but no, they've got a sentry there. Why won't he seize him into the feed troop? They go, and that'll be the pesky weaver going down as Wymon gets a mega kill streak on this main. <laughs> oh, Wymon. Yeah, he, he's gonna get it. It's the ignition power, man, you know? If, it is. If you're a guy who confident enough to sing that song and acts, it's not like he showed it on purpose to the world. But. <laughs> You know, it builds confidence. Raging, running into tree, they've got control, they've still got the He got baited there, John Cuckoo knew exactly what he was doing. Same play, same time here for Cuckoo, but Raging did not predict that the rest of the team would be behind. Pull me once, shame on me, but pull me twice, and shame on you. Raging, we'll go to the grave and think about what he's done for a second, but team one. Radiance They'll move into that bottom T1 tower days. and it'll be no problem for Carl to just take out on Radiant his own. lost one of them bottom towers. Did manage to get some space to shove in the top lane a bit. Fortify was there to pull that back and they're not going to be able to really make too much progress on the tower. Mid one forced to back off. SMG kind of pivoting their play style here, Mike, right? Like they're just taking it slow and maybe playing as two or three, trying to find some simple pickoffs, but they've left mid Radiant's one alone to just farm. His Daedalus is right almost now. done. That's a big item spike for the Dusa. She can just run up, get some damage off. No protective items on mid one though. No BKBs, nothing to stop the jump in from Carl or the Stone Gaze from just being fully channeled by Savage in an opportunistic spot. And I think that's going to be an issue for SMG when they do decide to group up. They will go for the smoke play. And you have to look for that angle here. You're relying a lot on Raging to get a good charge off as well and good use on that Nether Strike. We'll see if they find the angle light. They're gonna try who's the first target. Oh, that's a big one. They found Carl on that lane up. Raging he's got that charge off for Carl. He's got a BKB up, so he might be able to escape and just find time for his team to rejoin and go for the fight. Or maybe not. Whitemon, he is being left behind on the vein. That kill will go to Moon. But can they find more? It's only a pause five for now. The rest of T1, they've successfully backed off. Still, uh, still a pretty good kill, even though it's a Bane. <laughs> that was worth 444 gold, so you're gonna be pretty happy on SMG taking that streak off of White Mon that really did want to kill off Carl. That was the angle they were looking for. They force out the BKB use. I think T1 might look at this as an opportunity. It's not quite nighttime. They do have Dark Ascension. They're not really under pressure to play fast on T1's end, to be fair. Like, they can just sit back. Savage is winning far more already. 2k above the Luna, and... As a Luna, you never like being an item behind. It feels like this is here that wants to be above everyone else with a farming pace it has. Not quite happening yet for mid one. Does do a lot of damage, but again, he's lacking protection. He's lacking some stats to really stay alive in the middle of that. CT1 trying to chase down Arfu here on this Weaver. Gonna work out in their favor though. The Arfu Weaver just proving to be a little bit too sneaky. Both teams just kind of reserving themselves to just keep farming up. Savage will pick up the eye of Scardi now, so you, you've got a problem with this Medusa. She is getting tankier and tankier as time goes on, and we always like to talk about this timing, John, but once you get to that Aghanim Scepter, things do start to get very, very scary if you are SMG. 
It just gives you so much more team fight lockdown. Zafu, oh, he's gonna go for a TB, but why much right onto it? Yes, he knows exactly where Afu's gone. Not just slowly wait it out. Take the kill for Cuckoo. Immediate smoke off of that as well. Carl will break to farm, but they've got the ganking trio ready. They can just kind of run around with Cuckoo. He still has the Dark Ascension set to go. They find a kill. They don't really have the best forward vision here from T1, so it's it's pretty hard for them to find the angle. I think SMG's going to be able to just play defensively from there. Next, Roshan is pretty close, though, Mike. 44 seconds away. I think T1's in a position where they can actually fight in the pit. As long as they get a good stone gaze off and good get a good angle with Cuckoo with the silence coming true, it, it's actually pretty hard for SMG to just run up there. Your AoE control is really just charge. Maybe the silence from the DP, so a lot still relying on Raging to just find a good line to charge in and get some stuns off. Yeah, I mean, all that, John, and it's almost guaranteed T1's gonna find a double damage rune before that Roshan does get started. <laughs> Raging, go for a charge out onto Savage. The strike gonna be cancelled off. Keep in mind the Raging, he does have the eggs up, and that's gonna make life a little bit more challenging for T1. That act can be really game-changing in these spots. Cuckoo, he pops the ulti immediately, and they go on to Zephyr. The IO's gone straight off the bat. Nice start here for SMG. T1, do you want to keep this fight up? I mean, they've already committed the Dark Ascent, and this is kind of expiring slowly but surely. The SMG, they know this. They want to reinitiate. Back on the Savage, but he'll turn around and scope the man fight of that He does get Zarks up. A big charge out. It was on to an illusion. Savage is still fine, but they've got Arfu down. Now to turn back in on the break. In fact, never mind. Give me what, Roger. First, you'll get him. It was holding that high ground on that Radiant Triangle. The buyback's gonna be there, and the charge is immediate back in onto Wymon. We'll try to imitate. It shouldn't be quite enough. Wymon will try to go for a run. They're gonna find a way to try and take Savage now. And he has been left behind. And Savage will drop, and John, would you believe it? There is a DD room before Roshan. Oh, yes. top he's got the now. bottle, so they're not gonna be able to hand it over to mid one, but that will enable the Roshan. Straight Dyer's into Roche, they go. T1, and they lose the big assassin. They need Radiant the IO to kind of help them sustain days. themselves, amp up their damage for the overcharge. And once Sep is taken out, the buyback commitment from SMG was very good. They jump back in, manage to find a kill, and take Roche number two. So that's Aegis and the Shard coming out here. It's gonna be a massive spike for SMG, and that will allow them to oh, maybe eye more objectives. They need to melt some of these tier two no, towers down, start to maybe, you know, apply pressure onto the high ground if possible. They've got the lineup to enable that, Mike. And now they've got the items to also sustain that. T1, have to be a bit cautious. It's nighttime, Dark Ascension not too far off. They need to really just stick by Savage. They can't allow the Dusa to be isolated without the IO. Zep Zephyr has to maybe just play further back and just really stand as safe as possible to ensure that the buff is there, the sustain is there for your big win condition. Group up here in the mid lane. They want to try and use Savage's bait on that Dusa. Top SMG, they might take that bait. They've the smoked up as four. There is going to be a counter smoke though. T1. They'll group up as four and go for their own smoke. So you're still willing to fight into the ages. Thing is though, it seems like they might find mid one and Roger by Them themselves. The rest of the team, they're across the map right now. Uh oh, the mid one and Roger, they've got a run, but nobody's gonna be coming in hell about. They do at least have Raging charging in, but it may be too late for at least the first fight. It will go down, TP's in, they're trying to make their way over. Mid one, he'll pump the Eclipse, but it might be all too late, as the Light Strike Ray's gonna come in and they've lost their Luna. Radiant's mid towers Oh, the humanity, SMG, they try to smoke across the map at the wrong time. And T1, they read them like a book. Tips out. Regeneration. It's not really mid one spot though, John, but tips are out as moon now. We'll get caught by the fiend from a black mod. The pain is quite extreme here. With Dooku just whacking away. Carl, who else are we gonna find, sir? But they're after Raging Potato. Raging. Okay, to just run his way up. Then they go to the tier 2 mid towers. Savage, you're a bit late Radiance to the tipping party, sir, but... <laughs> I mean, why not? Radiance toughened up their structures. T1, just showing how confident they are. They don't care about Aegis, they know they've got the damage, they know they've got the ways Radiance to... Radiance mid-towers. Uh, take out these fights still. 
And the big thing was that you didn't immediately lose Zephyr. And the charge came out a bit too delayed. They had the damage coming through. The overcharge was on top and just managed to make it work. Uh, with the Dark Ascension, Kuku gets all the info out. And now T1 with a 4k lead. And there were a couple of buybacks that were on from SMG as well. So the supports can't just join in for the next engagement. Savage show. He's left alone, but it's only engaging to play tag. He's still going though. He is. He's hoping for that 70%, but the nightmare is going to come out. Raging. Radiant you feel so much stronger with the Aghanim Zephyr right drop, now. and that's the thing with the breakup. It's that low cooldown charge, just allowing you to constantly just mess around the team fight. Trouble, Speaking of Ags though, John tower. Savage now has his own Aghanim Zephyr drop. Very annoying with that Petrify on the Mystic Snake. Middle of a team fight, and we've seen SMG, John. It, it, it's very hard to keep mid one alive in these team fights. Yeah, it, it, it's tough. Like they, they do have the Ab Abaddon to kind of save, so you've always got the you've always got the Aphotic Shield and this world to save and sustain. But there's a lot of spam from T1. They've got a lot of silences. They've got a lot of controls in T1. They don't have long to wait. They just smoke up. The cooldowns are so low, they can just keep going. There, Carl, the Silver Edge, and now the Dark Ascension out on the third. Will be spotted, sir. Dust is out onto the Weaver. Roger, he'll get caught as well. No more time available. He'll drop straight off the bat. Raging, trying to turn back in onto Kukun. They will get the Night Stalker. It's not a bad trade for SMG thus far. He won. Second guessing to it. They keep going, but Carl again gonna find the Weaver. But Afu, he's gonna be alright with the time lapse out. And now the Eclipse in from mid one. The try. In fact, the Eclipse is still on cooldown. They will try it out now. After Savage, but he's fine. In fact, Moon, he'll be the one to drop and raging. He's been caught by the Stone Gate. He's trying to run as Carl. He takes down Afu on that Weaver eventually. And mid one, he's been left behind. With the eye of Scarty Slow from Savage, Mid One is not going to be able to run fast enough to get away. Tips her out again. Cuckoo, he won't mind dying if it means Mid One dying to boot. It's a really strong trade for T1. This is going to open up the high ground now. They've got so much damage. With that dual core we talked about, like uh, Lena, Dusa, both show scale really well into late game and they take objectives really fast. I don't know if you can really buy back on your Luna without the Eclipse. It just feels like you don't have much to offer. So you don't have to surrender at least one sack. Maybe two of you want chips. Carl, oh, he's gonna be the target here on that lane on this one. He'll come in, but you've got no eclipse in the bed for fire immediately out the bed with the smelt. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree with Carl there, John. It was not too bright. He just completely disappears, and well, Savage, he's on to the T4 towers now. 29 minutes in. What the hell, not? They've hit their timing just perfectly in T1. They understand how strong they are at the moment. This MG will try it one more time to defend and find time for their carry to be back up and online. Raging will charge in. That's not going to be quite enough though as Carl just with the damage output on the Roger. Forcing it back to the Gunson already. Another charge out on the Zephyr. The Flash trying to take down that IO immediately with the Ghost Chester. No, it's not going to be enough, but it won't matter. Carl oh, Boo's gone. He'll commit a buyback here on Zephyr as soon. He just keeps rushing forward, but there's no damage output. And they've called the GG. The T1. Taking two games, 30 minutes each. And I'll tell you, John, I mean, SMG, they show some signs of brilliance, but D1, they are just a class above.